good morning uh, in the previous class we started with the module 3 and we discussed about the techniques what we have in order to transfer the data between the io devices and the memory and while discussing the techniques so we discussed the program controlled io and the second technique is the interrupt driven io and the last technique is direct memory access and in the previous class we saw the detailed discussion about the program controlled io and in that if you observe so the processor has to execute a wait cycle okay until the input or output device is ready so it has to wait for a long time or it has to okay go through the wait loop n number of times until the device is ready so in during that time the processor can execute some useful instruction so in order to do that we have the next approach and that approach is interrupt driven io now let us discuss about the interrupts okay and let us see okay how the uh, how the processor okay uh, how the processor is going to make use of the time efficiently okay yes if you consider the interrupts so instead of waiting for the input or output device to be ready we can make an arrangement such that the input or output device whenever it is ready it is going to make a, uh, it is going to alert okay the processor by assigning a signal by sending a signal okay so if it makes the processor alert that the device is ready to okay process the data that is the device is ready to accept the data or ready to give the data in that case okay we call such a signal as interrupt okay so we call such a signal so using which the io device is alerting the processor that it is ready to okay do the function is called as interrupt and i have written all the terms which are related to the interrupts so interrupt is nothing but a signal which is given by the io device to the processor to indicate that the device is ready okay and next if you consider the next term we have is the interrupt request so interrupt request is nothing but so whenever the device is ready so it has to send that okay signal over a control line so one of the control line must be used so that it indicates the processor that the device is ready so in order to do that okay so that process is called as interrupt request so when it sends a signal over the control line okay to the processor so it that is called as interrupt request and next so if you consider the next term which is associated with the interrupt it is interrupt service routine so interrupt service routine is nothing but the routine which is to be executed okay say for example in the previous okay uh, class we have discussed an example of reading a character and okay displaying the character if you consider that program itself so whenever the input okay device is ready to give the character to the processor to store it in a memory location so when sn is made as high so it has to indicate that okay to the processor so through the interrupt request okay so through the control line it is going to send a signal that it is ready with the data to be given as input so the processor will be executing some other instruction and it will halt the instruction as soon as it receives the interrupt and then it is going to okay execute the set of instructions so that are okay related to accepting input or storing that input okay the whatever we have in the data and register into r1 okay so let us call those set of instructions as interrupt service routine so depending on okay which device is raising the interrupt so that particular se program segment will be executed and those set of instructions are called as interrupt service routine okay yes so now we know what is interrupt then what is interrupt request and then what is interrupt service routine so before moving to the other terms okay let us see okay by considering an example how okay the processor is going to execute the program when there is an interrupt so in order to understand that let us consider a very simple example so where do we have two routines so one is compute okay so let us call for the first routine as compute routine and let us assume we have another okay routine which is called as print routine 
So let us assume these two are the routines which are to be executed. Uh, we have a program wherein we have certain computations to be done. So once the computation is over, the result contains n number of lines and those n number li of lines to be okay printed by the print routine. So this is the assumption we are making. So this com uh, compute routine is going to perform okay many calculations and is, it is going to produce produce result which consisting of n lines. Okay, that is our assumption and that is our example what we are considering. So if, with that example, okay, so we have two routines to be executed and let us consider the first routine as compute routine okay and the next next routine is print routine so let us assume we have 0 1 okay etc m lines and let us assume so we have So these are the lines we have in the compute routine and here we have print routine okay yes so now uh, by assuming the compute routine and the print routine so we let us assume that so the processor is executing the ith instruction while executing this ith instruction okay let us assume there is a request from the printer so that is an io device so let us assume the printer is requesting for the control of the pro processor so yes so now when there is a interrupt request okay when there is a interrupt request the processor is going to halt the execution of the first routine that is compute routine it is going to okay stop the execution at this point and it is going to transfer the control to the print routine the print routine okay the instructions which are there in the print routine will be executed and once the execution is over okay so he will be having a return from the sub uh, sorry return from the uh, print routine instruction okay so it is going to return from this instruction and it is going to return from the print routine and it is going to resume the execution from uh, i plus 1 instruction so this is how the operation happens whenever there is an interrupt request okay so interrupt request subroutine so routine whatever we have so this will be executed and once we encounter with the return instruction it is going to okay start the execution of the compute routine from i plus 1 instruction so this is how the operation happens whenever there is an interrupt request okay so now if you observe the operation so it looks very similar to the subroutine okay in the subroutine also we will be having call statement and we will be having return statement whenever there is a call so it is going to execute the instructions in the subroutine and when we encounter the return instruction in the subroutine it is going to transfer the control okay so that the execution resumes at the point of interruption so here also the execution okay passing the control from one routine to the other routine happens in the similar way so but there is a difference okay between the subroutine and the interrupt service routine what we have so that we will discuss later so now just understand so we have m instructions in the okay compute routine and we have certain instructions okay in the print routine so while execution of ith instruction so if i assume there is a interrupt request from the print routine so it is going to transfer the control to the print routine and the instructions of the print routine will be executed and the last instruction so return from the interrupt service uh, routine so it will be executed and that is going to transfer the control to the next instruction that is i plus 1 instruction so in order to do so so we know that the contents of program counter needs to be stored so why because is while okay the processor is executing this i instruction the program counter will be pointing to i plus 1 so when it is going to okay make a jump to the print routine after receiving an interrupt request so it is going to update the content of pc as the address of the first first okay 
instruction which is present in the print protein because of that reason because of that reason so we have to store this i plus 1 in some memory location or we can make use of stacks as we discussed in case of subroutines okay so after execution of the written instruction so the pc content will be restored and execution will resume from the i plus 1 instruction so this is about the use of the interrupt service routine and okay the process of execution or transfer of control from one routine to the other routine whenever there is an interrupt request okay and um, as i said so the subroutine and the interrupt service routine what we have so they look very similar but the difference between these two is whenever we call a subroutine we always okay call the subroutine and we will be having some function which is to be performed by the subroutine which is required for the current program being executed so whenever it is required to perform certain calculations certain okay uh, computations then only we are going to make a call to the subroutine but whereas in this case so it is not necessary that you there should be any relation between the present program which is executed and the interrupt service routine so interrupt service routine which will be executed or interrupt request which is raised may be a part of some other program itself therefore so there is no relation between okay the uh, routine that is the interrupt service routine which is executed with a program so the result of this will be having nothing to do with the okay execution of the code which is okay currently being executed so that is the main difference between the subroutine and the interrupt service routine there the values which will be okay returning from the subroutine are useful for the computation the next okay processing of the next instructions but in this case it is not the case okay they may be okay completely different uh, routines from two different programs itself okay so because of that reason so we should be very careful okay while handling the interrupts meaning is if you have any registers okay or any okay memory location contents so which are needed to be stored before transferring the control to the uh, print routine that is the interrupt service routine that should be done so you can have a mechanism wherein the processor itself stores the data before transferring okay the data before transferring the control to the interrupt service routine okay and uh, before that before going to uh, discuss about the storage of the contents of the registers which are essential okay we need to discuss about very important concept that is the interrupt acknowledge signal so once the interrupt request has been raised by the inter the io devices okay it is essential to uh, convey that it has been acknowledged so acknowledged by the processor therefore so there will be some signal which is called as interrupt acknowledge so which will be given as an acknowledgement to the raised interrupt okay request and in some cases in some computers okay the accessing of the data register and the status register which are present in the device interfacing circuitry will inform the io device that its request has been serviced so we can have okay this interrupt acknowledge signal so which will be once again a signal on the control sig uh, control line okay and using this signal the processor indicates or okay signifies that it has been okay recognized the interrupt request has been recognized and it will be processed so in case okay in some cases so you will be having an arrangement wherein so the execution of the instructions of uh, the interrupt service routine itself intimates that the io device okay whichever has raised the interrupt request that the service has been okay acknowledged and the service that is the interrupt service routine has been executed okay by when it is going to refer to the data registers and say status register so that is the okay indication to the io device okay respective io device which has given or uh, the interrupt request okay so this is how the interrupt which is raised is acknowledged by the computer now let us see okay the 
processor registers which are to be stored. So if you consider the processor registers, the registers which are to be stored are the program counter because that is very important. We know that the execution of the main program has to start from the point of interruption therefore so it has to know from where the execution has to resume therefore so it has to store the value of PC so that is very important and the other okay value which is very important is the processor register okay the processor status register that is very important so usually the computer or the processor okay will store these two registers other than these two registers if you are interested to store any of the other registers okay that has to be done manually so you have to write the instructions okay so such that it stores all the registers which are required for future use okay before execution of an interrupt service routine so if you consider the storing or the saving of the register contains before starting execution of the interrupt service routine so it actually involves memory transfer okay operations which will result in overall delay so because memory transfer requires more time so it is going to add to the total time of the to the execution therefore so it is going to increase the delay it is going to add up to the delay of the okay which is there in the execution of a program so because of that reason and along with that okay and along with that if you consider the delay with which the interrupt service routine gets executed that is so the uh, time when the request has been raised and the time when the request has been okay processed so the delay between these two increases and that delay is called as interrupt latency so interrupt latency is nothing but the delay okay so which is involved in execution of an interrupt service routine after raising the request okay after raising the request so after raising the request since the processor has to store the registers okay there are several memory operations to be carried out in such case there will be a delay okay in execution in starting the execution of the interrupt service routine in that case okay so we call that delay as interrupt latency okay yes so now as I said so storing the data okay which is essential so in earlier computers earlier processes they used to store all the register contents before starting execution of the interrupt service routine so why because is earlier processor used to have very less number of registers so because of the less number of registers okay it was easy to store the all the register contents okay into some memory location and once the interrupt service routine execution is over so the last routine that is return instruction what we have in the interrupt service routine so that is going to okay uh, resume or that is going to restore okay that is going to restore the contents of all the registers back from the memory so this was okay this facility was there uh, in earlier processors and if you consider uh, for some of the processes they will be having a facility wherein you will be provided with duplicate registers so whatever you have okay the registers say for example if you have 32 registers so all those registers will be ha will be having a duplicate copy of it so whenever you update some value okay so all the value will be stored and the processor okay will be using the duplicate register contents after execution of the interrupt service routine so that there is no okay the data transfer operation there, is, there are no memory transfers okay which are involved so thus increasing the speed of operation so this was the facility okay this is the facility provided in some of the processors so next so if you observe uh, we have the real time processing so if you consider the interrupts okay it is more than a program it is more than a simple routine because it's going to consider the interrupt okay so which is nowhere related to the computer which is external to the computer so the external peripherals which are connected okay to the computer are going to raise the interrupt and it is going to the execution of the statements will be performed depending on the request okay for uh, which is given by the uh, higher device and then it is going to resume the execution of the presently executed pro okay if you consider the interrupts so it is actually more than the 
IO transfer. So it is actually uh, doing a work which is more than just IO transfer. Okay. If you consider the interrupts, these are generated by an external device okay and it is going to transfer the control from one program to the other program okay by a signal which is initiated external to the computer okay and these interrupts usually are used in the applications like operating system and many control applications okay uh, where the there is a necessity for okay timed execution of certain routines so in such applications we are going to make use of the interrupts so uh, which, which can be okay called as the real-time processing so if you want to okay execute certain routines as and when they raise the request so such a type of okay execution is called as real-time processing okay so interrupts can be used in order to perform the real-time processing so this is about the interrupts and the associated okay terms what we have for the interrupts and next we are going to see the interrupt hardware so let us okay see the simple hardware structure so wherein we will be having switches and let us understand so how the request is going to be given to the processor using a single line okay interrupt okay we'll be having a single line for giving an interrupt so that we will see next next is interrupt hardware let us see okay the interrupt hardware so what are all the elements we have in the interrupt hardware and let us understand how okay the interrupt request will be accepted and it will be given to the processor so if you consider the interrupt hardware we have an interrupt request line okay and usually we represent this as intr okay bar and you will be having a voltage which is represented as vdd and you will be having a register r okay and you will be having switches through which the IO devices are connected okay so let us call this as INTR1 so let us call this as INTR2 similarly we will be having n number of interrupt requests because we know that so you will be having n number of IO devices which are connected to the processor and let us okay consider an inverter and here you will be having INTR signal and this is the processor open drain okay these switches are nothing but open drain or open collector gates so these open drain in case of MOS okay if you are using MOS transistors open collector if you are using BJTs okay yes so now if you consider the interrupt hardware so uh, this is the simple okay uh, the hardware circuit okay which is used in order to give the interrupt to the processor and if you observe we have INTR1, INTR2 etc, INTR R okay all these are the interrupt request and here we have a single line and this is the interrupt request line so through this line we are going to give request to the processor and a single line can be used okay in order to serve the end devices so we have all end devices connected to the single line okay which is given as input to the processor and in this case if you observe so all are okay connected through a switch to ground or connection and and this switch to ground can also be okay connected by using open drain or open connector okay that is open drain we call using uh, if you are using MOS transistors and open collector so is referred if you are using BJTs so using this switches also you can okay make such connections that is switch to ground connection and here in this case so whenever there is a request okay so that particular signal will be closing the switch and whenever the switch closes so this INTR will be connected to zero so it indicates that it is an okay there is a request for the 
okay control of the processor and that will be given here and if you observe here we have a not gate here we have an inverter and INTR okay so with the complement of INTR bar will be okay present here and that will be given to the processor so now if you observe so if there is no okay closing of the switches in the sense if there is no interrupt request from any of the devices then all these okay switches are in open condition and in that case so we will be having INTR which is connected to VDD so that indicates the, so that is the inactive okay case so that VDD on INTR indicates that so there is no request for the interrupt and if any one of the devices okay so request for the uh, control of the processor that is there is an interrupt request on any of these lines then that particular okay switch will be closed and the INTR value will be that is it will be connected to zero and since we have INTR bar so zero on this line okay is nothing but one on the INTR so that is the interrupt request will be made to the processor okay so this is the connection and if you observe since all the switches are connected to a single line okay and if any one of the switch if any one of the switch goes zero and the request will be made okay the INTR is nothing but the logical sum of INTR okay 1 plus INTR 2 plus etc plus INTR So this is the equation we can consider okay so INTR is nothing but the logical sum of all this so why because is so we know that so if you consider the logical R if any one of the signal is okay one then the output will be one so you may be thinking that so since these are going to connect to a log uh, you know, uh, zero level okay so these are zero so then how it is going to okay become our operation but remember so I am speaking about the final okay value so this final value is nothing but complement of this therefore if any one of these is high okay then it is going to make this as high so that the interrupt request uh, request has been okay given to the processor so this is the simple okay hardware structure if you observe okay if you are using open drain or open collector even in this case okay so if the switch is closed okay then the logic value the output will be zero and if the switch is not closed if it is open then the value is 1 and if you observe R we have a register here and that register is called as pull up register why because is when these are okay in the open condition if the switches okay what we have here all are in open condition in that case this register is going to pull the line voltage to VDD it is going to pull the line voltage to VDD therefore we are calling this as pull up register okay so this is about the hardware and next concept what we are going to discuss is enabling and disabling interrupts so if you consider the interrupts so we know that some mechanism has to be there so that the interrupts are enabled or disabled because the programmer has to be provided with the, all the facility okay so that he can um, write the program in a okay better way because whenever there is a request for the interrupt okay whenever there is an interrupt request in that case so if the interrupt request after okay recognizing it after acknowledging it if it is not disabled so there will be a chance of okay multiple request and the program may enter infinite loop so in order to avoid such conditions and there are many other situations wherein we will be having okay um, we will be having a condition wherein we have to disable or enable the interrupts in such case it is essential to have some mechanism in the computer to enable or disable the interrupts which are okay requested and so if you consider okay any program so it is essential to provide enabling and disabling of the the interrupts so because the problem what I just discussed that is so if it is not okay provided then there may be a chance that so the program enters an okay infinite loop so in that case so it is essential to have enabling and disabling and the programmer must be provided with the flexibility of okay enabling the interrupt request and disabling the interrupt request and okay 
in particular cases. So, wherein in some cases, so we know that the interrupt request can raise at any time. In such cases, okay, if the programmer wants some of the instruction to be executed in a particular order, if an interrupt request is made and if the execution is halted, then in such case, okay, the objective of the programmer may not be achieved. So, because of that reason, okay, in such cases, wherein so the execution order must be maintained or wherein okay there may be a chance of entering into an infinite loop which is essential to provide enabling and disabling of the interrupts and in order to do that we have okay so certain options and so let us consider one by one so the first option is processor okay hardware ignore the intr line that is interrupt request line until the first request is executed so whenever it receives the first request okay until that is executed so it is going to ignore the okay the other request so which come over the interrupt service routine and so that is the first method and next method if you consider and in this okay first method so this is done by writing the first line in the interrupt service routine as the um, instruction that is disable interrupt so if you write the instruction okay disable interrupt or interrupt disable okay as the first one and after execution of that particular routine so before returning before returning you have to write a statement that so we have to enable once again so we have to write a statement that so enable interrupt so if you use enable and disable okay instructions in order to enable or disable so the processor is going to ignore the interrupt request from others okay until one instruction that is one request is being executed so there what we are supposed to do we are supposed to include the first line as interrupt disable and the last line must be interrupt enable and you should see that so it resumes the execution before the execution of interrupt enable okay so that is the requirement of the first technique and if you consider the second one so processor automatically disables interrupts so in this technique so we are going to store the contents of pc and the processor status register okay and we know that in processor status register one of the bit will be an interrupt enable pin okay or bit and if that is high then only it is going to okay acknowledge or it is going to receive the request from the yeah, the devices which are connected therefore so while storing so when the there is a request okay when there is a request for an interrupt and when the processor is going to pass the control to the interrupt service routine so we know that these two register will be stored so once it is stored okay it has to make the bit okay so as low so we know that ps bit will be high okay if that is high then only the processor is going to detect or it is going to receive the interrupt request from other devices therefore so until the service routine okay so which is to be executed is done okay the execution of that service routine is done this ps must be okay ps bit so p the bit in the ps must be made as zero so that okay so once the execution is over we know that it is going to resume or it is going to restore okay it is going to restore the contents of pc and okay ps once it restores so the value of the interrupt enable that is which is made as one okay which was one earlier will be stored back in ps so that it receives the next interrupt request okay interrupt request so this is how the method okay that is done in processor okay automatically disabling the interrupts so the processor is going to store the contents of pc and contents of the process register okay status register so in some location and it is going to start execution of a particular okay uh, service routine and while starting the execution it is going to make that enable pin okay which is present in the process register as zero so that no further okay requests are detected that is okay received by the processor and once the execution is over so it is going to restore the contents of ps 
so while restoring it is going to restore from the memory locations where it has been stored so before stopping the execution so while restoring so it is going to restore the bit as one therefore so it will be accepting the further request and lastly we have edge triggered so edge triggered in this what it is going to do is it is going to detect the interrupt only on the edge of a signal so only on the edge of a single sig signal okay and it is going to neglect the on time of the entire signal meaning is so only during the starting okay whichever is first so that will be detected and that particular routine will be executed neglecting all other routines so however the okay duration of this on duration on or high okay duration it is going to neglect all the request so okay and it is going to uh, consider only that signal which actually okay makes the request first so which actually causes the onset of this okay interrupt request signal so this is how okay we can include enabling and disabling of interrupts in okay the processor and after this so now let us okay uh, consolidate all the points what we discussed and let us understand okay the summary of the interrupts so that is how the interrupt uh, request is made and how the execution happens and how okay it is going to uh, enable or disable and how it is going to okay come back to the or resume the execution of the interrupted program okay yes so if you consider initially so the execution of the main program will be okay starting so once it is executing some program whenever there is uh, there will be a request from an interrupt request from an io device so it is going to resume uh, sorry it is going to halt the execution it is going to pass the control okay to the service routine so while passing the control it is going to disable all other okay uh, interrupt request or okay request from the io devices and then it is going to okay give an acknowledgement to the io device that its request has been received and it has been okay acknowledged and it is going to perform the operation or function which is required by the interrupt okay request so it is going to execute the service routine depending on the service routine so whatever the request that has been made by the input device that will be executed and after execution so it is going to okay give back the control to the main program and it, the main program is going to resume its execution from the point of interruption so these are all the steps okay that are involved in execution of and interrupt okay so while the program okay some main program is being executed so this is about the interrupts and we will be having okay further discussion in the next class thank you